Okay, I thought I'd put together a bit of a tutorial for you on um, how I process my full discs. Um, I'm not suggesting that it is the best way. I'm not suggesting that I'm making efficient use of uh, Photoshop, but it's the way I do. It's a Photoshop uh, CS4, by the way, as well. Okay, so first things first, I go up into File. Um, what I've done already at this point is I've collected six AVIs, um, six different sectors of the Sun's disc. Uh, process these through Avistack 2. So what I'm going to do now is use the photo merge function in CS4 which you'll find in file and automate down here in photo merge. I'm going to click on that and um, what that's going to do is pull up a window um, and down here I always keep the layout on auto to be honest. Um, I, I've got blend images together. I always tick vignette and removal and geometric distortion correction um, I'm going to browse some files first of all, um, use some files from a few days ago. Um, I've got some here, so I'm going to use control and click to select. I'm going to do HA take three. Um, so make sure I've got all six files or TIFF files that make up the full disk. There we go, got all six there, then click OK. That loads those up in the box there, and then all we need to do is click OK on here and um, Photoshop starts loading them up down in the layers panel down here on the bottom right. Um, it does take a few minutes to load them all up um, and then just stack them all together but it, um, I, fa I found a photo merge quite an effective way of doing this. Okay we'll just bring back the um, layers panel, press F7, not sure where that's disappeared to. There we go. Okay, so any second now, this should pull this together for us as a full disk image. There we go. Excellent. Okay, right, first things first. You can see down here on the bottom right uh, all the different layers where it's made up, and you can see where it is taking different sections from different portions that make up the image. Um, what I want to do first is I'm just going to flatten that down a bit so I'm going to go into layer and the drop down up there and all the way down at the bottom here is flatten image that's just going to bring it down um, to a much smaller file it was, um, it was nearly 60 meg before it's working now down at more like 16 meg okay what you can see around the edges um, where it's not been perfectly cropped is we've got this white boardroom. We obviously don't want that on our images, so I'm going to use the paint bucket tool down here on the left hand side. Just make sure that the color's set to black there and just click on that. And I'm just going to go around and fill that in like so. Um, there we go, get rid of that. And this little bit down at the bottom down here is going to be a little harder to get to, so I'm going to use Control and Plus and just zoom in um, and just scroll down and find that little piece of white. There it is. Okay. Uh, just click on that, get rid of that. Okay, so now we've got a nice black background to our image. Control and zero, that brings it down to a full screen view, like so. Um, what I'm going to do now is just apply a little bit of um, pre sharp into this image, just to get it, um, just so we can start to see the details over there. Now, in the actions panel, down here on the right hand side, I've saved an action for the iterative unsharp mask down here okay so just make sure that's ticked that's selected like so I'm going to click the play button sometimes it lets me it does it all on its own sometimes it wants me to click OK today it's wanting me to click OK so what this is doing it is applying um, a 10% sharpen at a radius of 1.5 pixels with a threshold of zero levels okay and it's going to run it for 10 times like so there we go, like so. So that's run there. Just move that out of the way so I can see my layers. Um, okay, so we can see the disc there. We see the proms around the edges, things like that. I'm just going to move this paint pot out of the way, else I don't want to accidentally black the disc out. So first thing I'm going to do after those, um, after applying the iterative unsharp mask, is I'm just going to have a little look at the levels here, just to see what we're looking at. And you can see we've got a pretty decent spread here. Um, Obviously, the 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 sky in the image, if you like, the black sky in the image there, and then the main body of the image 
round here in the mid range which is what we want and then a few of the brighter areas on the far right hand side of the levels which corresponds to our flares and things like that so um, I'm just going to drag that in just a touch not by much 245 there we go down from 255 to 245 let's bring that up one 245 there we go okay so we are stretching it as much as we possibly can without actually causing either the black levels or the white levels to clip so I'm going to click OK there we go now next thing I want to do is um, just flatten this image down a bit there has been flats applied um, when the file was stacked in Avistack but you can see certainly down the center here I've certainly got a brighter band um, and by far one of the easiest ways to do this is just to use the median filter to get rid of it so what I'm going to do is press ctrl and J to duplicate the layer so I've got a new layer over here I'm going to work on this layer now so using the filters down here in noise we've got medium I'm going to select that it takes a few minutes for it to run there we go I've got this set to a radius of 70 pixels for me for my full disks for the image size image scale I'm recording that I found that works fine you may find um, for, your, for your own images if you choose to use this method different range of a, a different value is appropriate really it's just a case of practicing um, just trying different values and working out what works best so I'm going to click OK to apply that um, what I want to do now just while it's doing that is I want to bring the brightness of this right down um, because I need to do this for the next step so I'm going to use control of them use the curves function I'm just going to use the uh, their default darker function there which is just brought the middle of the curve down All right, so click OK um, I'm going to do this three times and I've found it better to do it repeat it three times like this than to try and do it all by a greater amount just the once okay so um, there we go down once more again um, and you can see still see um, this bright patch here okay which we're going to get rid of now so using the blending mode and the layers down here I'm going to go into the drop down I'm going to set this to difference like so and what you can see has happened um, compared to our original image if I just scroll between um, the disc itself is a lot darker but it's actually increased contrast significantly um, but also importantly the proms around the edges um, it has retained these so really what we've done is just darken the disc without darkening the proms which is a very very useful tool okay so we'll keep that on like so um, what I want to do now is is, um, is flatten these two layers together so I'm going to do shift control and E and that collapses them down into one there okay now um, as you can see the levels are all out on this it's a very dark image so I'm going to control and L pull up my levels function and there we go we can see on the levels curve down here it's all shifted towards the midtones and the shadows so we want to lighten that up so I'm just going to use the slider there just drag that across see where we get down to about 170 yep yeah, 170 there we go so <coughs> get that down to 170 click OK like so uh, and you can see now it's really starting to bring out the detail in the disk by flattening the image and one of the things I do do is zoom around at different scales you can see at the moment it's still um, quite soft quite a soft image um, I know it can be sharper than this I know we can get much more contrast as well so the next stage we're going to do is apply a high pass filter and to do this I'm going to press Control and J I'm going to duplicate that background layer again um, and then I'm going to go up into filters and then all the way down here at the bottom in others I'm going to go to high pass I'm going to click on high pass like so and um, you can see that applies that over the disk there I've got a radius set to 15 here um, again I've just found that works for my full disks um, using the scale I'm imaging at size of the disk um, I suspect it's going to be slightly different for everybody's images um, it really is a case of just playing around with these values, just seeing which works best for you, for your image scale, your scope, your level of detail. Um, it's a suck em and see really. So I'm going to click OK to apply that. It doesn't look particularly nice at the moment, but if we go here in the blending options and click on soft light, like so, what you will see if I toggle between the layers is with that layer activated 
lot more contrast going on in the disc if we zoom in a little bit more so we can see that um, okay you see it's really starting to bring out the contrast making the difference between lights and darks much more apparent so quite happy with that so I'm going to leave that as it is again I want to flatten this down so I'm going to use shift control and E to flatten it down there we go and now what I'm going to do I'm going to sharpen this up a bit more um, I know we can we can get this a bit sharper than it well, quite a bit more sharper than it is so I'm going to go back into my actions again I've got my iterative unsharp mask selected um, 10 iterations 10% 1.5 radius at zero threshold um, click play on that it's going to make me click OK 10 times again there we go there we go and um, what you'll find um, I found that 10 iterations at 10% doing in these two separate bursts like this works well for me um, I found for instance I've got one um, set down here which is 20 iterations at 5% I found that works quite well as well um, I've also done five iterations at 20% which I found doesn't work quite as well so again um, it's all about your own image scale finding out what works best for you uh, and really find out what's what's best there isn't I don't think one size fits all for this okay so now we can see um, if we go into 100% there um, it's starting to look like I would expect it to this image is um, I think we can still sharpen it up and what I've tended to find once I've done um, these 20 iterations of unsharp mask I can only get away with um, doing a few more just to pull out that extra layer level of detail um, unsharp mask was the last filter I used so it's saved here as the filter shortcut control and F so we'll just do that once and then control and F twice three times I think let's just go control and plus I think that's just about it um, I think that's looking okay. It's important to keep looking at the uh, range of scales just to make sure um, how, how it affects the image as a whole. Okay, so a um, few things we can do now. Let's just zoom out a bit here. Um, first off, I don't know if you can see there, but it's quite noisy immediately in the um, sky around the disk around there you start to see the speckle pattern of the noise um, that's part of the, the unsharp mask process which, which is bringing that out but the good news is we can remove that um, but we've got to be careful we want to remove this speckle noise but we don't want to remove any faint prompts so what I want to do is just have a look around the disc and see if we can find a faint prom, um, we've got that lovely one there. But again, I think that's un that's unsuitable. It's it, it's probably too bright. That one. Let's just zoom in a bit more. Two hundred percent there. Um, and we'll see if we can find a nice faint prom or an area of faint proms to work on. Okay, so we'll just scroll around. We've got a candidate there. Um, it's looking quite soft at this image scale, but you be expected. Um, we don't want to start losing these fine details, we don't want to start losing the spicules um, so we need to find an area where we've got these nice and sharp, excellent, here we go um, so on this side of the sun here you can see, I've just dragged that over a little bit more, there we go um, you can see this, we've got a filler prom going on there um, these proms, there's a lot of faint detail um, there but there's also quite a bit of noise and we, it's the noise that we want to get rid of so um, what we're going to do is use our levels function in control and L like so and um, let's drag that out of the way so we can see it and on this side the black levels um, what we want to do is just start bringing that up a bit so if we go to one you can see that it's um, it's taken away quite a lot of that um, that, that background noise, that fuzz, pixelated noise. Okay, if we take it to two, um, similar similar sort of thing. There we go. If we, we can take it too far, it's important that you don't. If I just put in five here, which isn't much, whoops, not 54. Um, if we put in five, you can see it's taken away quite a lot of the fine detail in these problems. And we can see this by going, we go back to zero, go back to five. 
okay you can see what's happening there so we want to retain that detail so I'm going to let's have a look to close call this one it could be one could be two I'm going to stick with two I'll layer on the side of caution so click OK let's just zoom out a touch there we go and then we click OK on our levels like so um, now pretty much done with the image itself now um, the, there's a couple of things I like to look just just like to, uh, to to do with it first so if you press control and zero just to get it so it's um, in, in the full view there what I'm going to do is just crop it down well, I've got this already set on fixed size down here 1600 pixels by 1600 that just happens to be the size um, of my full disk images and I'm going to use the, um, the the rectangle function there we'll just pop our rectangle on like so um, and we can use the cursor arrows here just to fine tune it I'm just doing this by eye it really doesn't matter if it's not exactly square a little bit more there we go and then if we go into image and the drop downs and then into crop there we go that's taken it away like so <coughs> excuse me um, I'm going to press Control and D just to deselect that. Now I know from looking at the gong images for the day that is um, that's actually the wrong way around. So I'm going to go image, I'm going to image rotation. I'm going to flip that canvas horizontally like that. That's the right way around. Um, and then now what I've got is pretty much my fin finished image. Um, I could save it as a black and white. I quite like black and whites. Um, I can save them as black and whites. Or alternatively, I can add colour. Um, if I want to add colour, that's really easy. I'm going to pull up Control and L for my level functions again. And then in my levels, um, I've got one down here, Solar Colour Scheme, which I've already already saved as a preset. So I'm just going to click on that, like so. Um, and hey, presto, it pulls up the colour. Let's just zoom out. You can see a range of scales so we can see all the proms are nice and visible there. That filler proms visible. Um, nice prom down there noise around the edge of the disc isn't problematic I don't think it's too much of a problem there we can just have a closer look at that just to check everything's okay but um, I think we've just about got that and then all I'll do from this point is I'll save it so file save as okay U usual routine for saving it saving it and then um, I'll just upload it for you guys to see so there you go I hope it's of some use not saying it's the right way, not saying it's the wrong way, it's just the way I do it. Hope it's been some help. Cheers, bye bye.